for the serious gamer. What's going on, Next Gen Tactics? This is Gariscon, and this is my first video entry into the uh, NGT Games Director Contest, and I am very excited about this contest. Uh, I think everyone should be very excited about this contest. Um, it's a really cool opportunity for everyone here, uh, myself included, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a fun ride. Uh, it's going to see hopefully get, see a lot of good videos. Hopefully, going to make a lot of good videos, and uh, yeah, I hope it's uh, hope it's just overall a, a good uh, a good experience for everyone. But anyway, right off the bat here, I'm going to start off with a Modern Warfare 2 video, and this is definitely going to be a different kind of Modern Warfare 2 video than I'm sure many of you are used to. Um, it's bare bones objective pro is what I'm playing. And I'm playing with a, actually a full party, a full, was it, like six guys, I think. And we're all using microphones, we're all, uh, it's a, I know it's a novel idea uh, in a video game, you know, team-based game, objective uh, gameplay to uh, use a microphone and, and communicate with your teammates. And I know that, that's one thing I'm going to talk about in this commentary. Um, just how, the importance of that teamwork, and, and the reason why I really, the only... I don't, this is definitely not going to turn into a uh, Modern Warfare 2, um, uh, a poop on Modern Warfare 2 video. Don't don't worry about that. Um, but I, I will just say this, that, you know, the only time I really like playing this game is when I'm playing this mode. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, it's just, everyone's got their preferred modes. I know a lot of people that prefer Team Deathmatch. I happen to prefer uh, Objective Bare Bones Pro with a full group of players, you know, friends and whatnot. So that's, you know, that's all, that's all that is. But you're definitely going to see, like right here, I'm spectating uh, a teammate of mine, and he's just chilling back by the flag. Uh, you know, like I, I didn't mention, we're playing capture the flag, uh, if you guys didn't already know. And uh, that's going to be a key a key thing to keep in mind when, I, when we're when going through this video, is that my team, this is heavily a heavily team-based gameplay video, and that's why I wanted, wanted to use this for this contest as a, an example of, you know, how I like to play... Um, and you're definitely going to see me fail <laughs> multiple times, uh, I know fails are next week, um, but, you know, that's just part of playing an objective game. There's going to be times where you make mistakes, um, there's going to be times where you do stupid stuff. I mean, maybe, maybe not, maybe for some of you guys out there who are, you know, just really good at the game, uh, you don't, you know, you don't make mistakes. I happen to not be, you know, I'm okay at the game, I happen to not be amazing or perfect, I will definitely make mistakes, um, but, you know, we learn from our mistakes, and so anyway, uh, in Capture the Flag. And it's just one other thing that, you know, I like about this mode is that it's team-based. Um, you know, Modern Warfare 2 isn't always thought of as, like, a team-based game or a game that, you know, is so teamwork-oriented. And uh, this one thing that I think is uh, generally overlooked when it comes to this game, this uh, objective... Objective Pro mode, uh, Bare Bones, actually, uh, Bare Bones Objective Pro is really, really fun with a team, with good teamwork, with guys who know what they're doing. I mean, the, I guess you could say the whole game is fun with guys who know what they're doing. But this game in mode in particular is just a lot of fun. You know, I've always, I've always really enjoyed Capture the Flag, and uh, the kill streaks really just kind of ruin a game like Capture the Flag, in my opinion. So playing it Bare Bones without kill streaks is, is, a, is a blast. So, a couple things to keep in mind when you're playing Capture the Flag. Um, one of the biggest things, and you're going to see me do it a lot, uh, you're, actually, you're going to see me not do it a lot. It's a kind of the mistake The mistake I most commonly make is in Capture the Flag. If you're a flag runner like I am, it's like, you'll notice, like, there's this guy up here, he's uh, just covering with six people on a team. It's, I think, in my opinion, it's ideal to have two to three flag runners and two to three guys defending your flag, which is really what it comes down to is keeping that flag away from the enemy hands. So we've got guys, you know, you'll see, like I mentioned earlier, in spec when you're spectating, here comes a fail. Here's a, I, like, I really, <laughs> I really wanted to kill him, and I got knifed. But hey, what are you going to do? You know what happens. Although, that was another thing to keep in mind. That's a, That was a really stupid mistake. I should have, I should have let him go and just ran straight, turned around and kept going for the flag. Um, but, but like I was saying, in order to get the flag, if you're a flag runner like I am, if you clear a pathway, so the map is basically, you can think of it in two halves. You, you got the left side or the right side, because you're generally going to want to flank. Going up the middle usually isn't a good idea. Usually the middle is where most traffic is, where most defense is. So you definitely want to go up the flank, left or right. 
But depending on which flank you go up, whether it be the left or the right, definitely want to make sure that if you saw, like, if I go up the right flank and I kill two, three enemies on my way and I clear out the flag area, like right here, I'm not going back where I came from. I'm going... So I just cleared out the, the, the side I ran up and I, for whatever reason, decide to go the opposite direction of which I came, which... Uh, it didn't work out for me in this case. It, w it looked like it was going to work out because my teammates actually ended up being able to cover that flank, that side. But if you're if you're a flag runner, you definitely want to go the way, go back the way you came. So when you leave your spawn, your flag area, and you're going to the enemy flag, you want to go back the way you came because generally, if you clear the way, if you clear a path, that path is still going to be clear for you on the way back. So it would be stupid to go the other direction, you know, go to go full circle around the map because there's going to be enemies waiting for you, or at least maybe not waiting for you, but they're definitely going to be there. And it's definitely going to be a lot easier just to go, you know, common sense, right? Where the area you came from that you, that doesn't have any enemies. So the next thing I wanted to talk about in uh, this, this game here is going to be the kill to death ratio, because in Modern Warfare 2, kill to death ratio is, I mean, People argue all day long about kill to death ratio and whether or not kill to death ratio makes you a good player, or whether or not uh, kill to death ratio is important. And uh, you know there are, there are definitely YouTube commentators who de only believe in kill to death ratio. Um, they will, you know, just go go for kills, stay, try to stay alive, and forget about objectives and all that. You know, kill streaks. Um, but in a, so in bare bones, you obviously don't have kill streaks to worry about. So right away, your kill to death isn't going to be inflated by kill streaks, uh, and it's also going to eliminate the, the kind of the need. Like I, I don't mind taking a death if I'm trying to get a, to a flag, or if I'm trying to recover a flag. Um, if I'm going for the objective and helping my team um, go closer to a win, I will take 15 deaths. Uh, well, maybe not, maybe not 15 deaths, but you guys, you guys are getting my point, right? So like, if you know, you'd much rather, I would much rather have a player on my team that's going to cover the objective, that's going to defend the objective properly, that's going to, uh, you know, be a flag runner and go for flags, um, versus a guy who's just going to camp or who's just going to, just going to try to get kills. Now, don't get me wrong, kills are important because if the enemy is constantly being killed, then they're, they're not going to really have a chance to take your flag. But I think there definitely needs to be a balance. So like I like I mentioned earlier, you're going to see my teammates, they're going to be camping our objective. They're going to be camping the flag and a lot of people would call them on that and just call them call them campers or call them kill whores and I would argue that no, they're just being team players. They're covering their objective. They're doing their job. You know, that's a big that's a really important thing to remember when you're playing with a team like this, when you're playing a team-based game mode, is that each teammate is going to have a job. And whether that job is to be a kill whore, to be a slayer, whether that job is to be a defender, which means, yeah, you're going to be camping out, you're going to be camping on an objective, uh, you may have a tent or some marshmallows, but you're going to be there, you may, get, you may get some hate mail afterwards, but, I mean, that's what it takes to defend an objective. Now, and then you're going to have guys who, in, in this case, in Capture Flag, like me, and uh, looks like three, three other of my teammates are we're flag runners, so we're less worried about getting kills, we're less worried about... Um, you know, hanging back and defending. We're more worried about rushing, uh, so that's your, why I'm using Marathon Lightweight, why I'm using Ninja, and yes, that's why I'm using the UMP, uh, you know, with Silenced. I'm going to get, probably going to get some hate for using the UMP, or, you know, a oh, UMP is overpowered, but when it comes down to it, why would you not want to have the best advantage to, uh, to win the game? So, Marathon Lightweight Ninja and UMP Silenced is a wonderful combination for, for a flag runner. I mean, it really is. There's, there's just no way around it. Um, I'm just, you, you know, using what the game has to offer is kind of a smart way to play. Whether or not other people are going to criticize you for that, I, I honestly wouldn't worry about it. And my, that, that, here comes my question to you guys, and, and what I'm curious, and why don't you guys write down in that comment section, uh, let me know what you think about uh, objective-based gameplay in a game like Modern Warfare 2. Are you more concerned about your kill-to-death ratio? Uh, are you gonna, you know, are you more likely to hang hang out and just kind of let the enemies come to you in order? And I don't mean in a in a tactical sense. I mean in a more of a I'm worried about my kill to death ratio sense because I definitely know players that would that would refuse to try to take a flag 
uh, because it would hurt their kill to death ratio. Myself, on the other hand, I'll rush that flag all day long trying to get it back to my base. Uh, and if it means I take five deaths, if it means I take ten deaths, um, yeah, that's what that means. If my At the end of the game, if my team wins, like we're winning here and we're about to win, uh, then if I, you know, if I went, uh, I mean, I end up going 25 and 16 in this game, which isn't even bad. I mean, that's, what's that, like one and a half, 1.49-ish KD, which I'm okay with that. You know, I've never traditionally been uh, an uber elite beast at this game. Uh, so if I can, you know, if I can break even and go positive, and at the same time help my team pull out a win, then I am absolutely happy. And I'm just curious what you guys think about that. Uh, what your guys' philosophy on kill to death ratio is. So go ahead and post that in the comment section. Check out my channel. And uh, uh, good luck to everyone else in this contest. And uh, I hope uh, we have a lot of fun here. Thanks a lot, guys. Later.